Hello there ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Crooked Horse Ranch out of Lamar County, Mississippi. Today we have another piece of history. Let's take this to the table and see what we got. Well, hello there my friends and fellow firearms enthusiasts. What we have here is the Ishavisk Mosin de Gaunt M44 carbine. Originally known as the M1891 three-line rifle, which was developed in 1882 to 1891, the Mosin de Gaunt has undergone at least 10 iterations. Fancy word there for you, iterations. Look it on up. Now, for the the term three line rifle that actually refers to the three lines actually refers to the Imperial Russian units of measurement when referencing calibers. Now, a little backstory on Mosin the Gaunt, on the Mosin the Gaunt rifle. The, the original, uh, well, I won't say the original, uh, but the, uh, the the name Mosin the Gaunt rifle was not actually a, it didn't come from the Russians or the Soviets, it actually came from the American press. See, the rifle itself was actually known amongst the Russians as Mosin's rifle after the actual inventor, Captain Sergei Ivanovich Mosin, as the Belgian inventor Nagant had really little to, you know, very little input on the on. The, the rifle itself, I think, you know, you know his main uh, contribution to the rifle was the spring clip within the, you know, the internal magazine here. However, uh, Nagant, he'll be, uh, uh, he'll be mostly known for the Nagant pistol that was later adopted by, the, you know, the, the Soviet military. But anywho, the M44 carbine was produced from 1943 to 1948. This particular one here was produced in 1946. Now the Russian Armed Forces adopted this in 1944. They were primarily made at the Isravisk Arsenal and also in 1944 Tula Arsenal you know, made these rifles as well. And they were issued uh, they were issued as a standard, uh, as the replacement to their standard rifle. Uh, it's magazine fed, holds five rounds, and is chambered in the, the 7.62 by 54, which also happens to be the world's oldest cartridge still in use today. The carbine also has a integrated folding bayon, uh, bayonet that's mounted to the barrel. And uh, fold it out and you just put your finger in there, slide this fo locking device forward. You bring it around. You got to kind of watch your fingers so you don't get pinched. There you go. It slides over the barrel and locks it in place. Then you got yourself a nice little frog sticker there. And then, defold it on back, just slide that up back on up, bring it back around and it locks back, back in. We have our adjustable sight. And do also our elevation. Internal magazine that holds five rounds. It's typically fed with stripper clips. I don't have any stripper clips with me. And you can also access the magazine by flipping that lever out. I suppose you could if you're you could drop some you know, some rounds in there like that, but you know, I think it'd be pre there'd be a predisposition to jamming. For the bolt, 
got your safety here to activate your safety just gonna pull back and rotate and that locks it in place and we're clear to remove the bolt you're gonna always point your rifle in a safe direction squeeze the trigger and while you got that trigger to you know pressed slide that bolt right on out then you put the bolt back in just doing the exact opposite slides right back on in Now the M44 carbine has a mass effective range of 500 meters. However, if you put an optic on this thing, you could probably push, you know, you know push this out to at least 850 meters. Now this was, you know, like I said earlier, a replacement to the uh, to their standard rifle, which would be. One of these versions of the Mosin Gun, the M9130. However, you know the timing of this rifle, just, you know, just uh, came out all wrong because you know it had is very uh, uh, the introduction was very short lived. Uh, due to uh, the SKS and later and, and later the AK-47 coming out. However, it's still considered one of the most mass-produced rifles, and is still used by countries around the globe. So let's uh, enough talk. Let's put some rounds in this thing and shoot this. And of course, for the extra cool factor, got to extend that bayonet. Now I have my main man, CJ here. And CJ, he got to put some rounds down range. Now it's my turn.
clear. I would say when firing this thing, and we're clear, the bolt, we're not, but when firing this thing, having the bayonet extended does throw off, you know, the accuracy of the rifle. We're going to shoot again without the bayonet extended. Alright, so we got CJ again behind the bolt. We'll see how he does without the bayonet extended. Now it's my turn. Put some round through this thing without the bayonet extended. Let's see how many targets we can miss. So definitely much easier without the bayonet extended. Let's go back to the bench. Now the 7.62 by 54 being the counterpart to the 30-06, the Mosin Nagant, whether it be the uh, you know the full size or the carbine versions, they make a formidable hunting rifle as it can take down most game in North America. However, one of the key drawbacks is the weight. Unmodified, this rifle here, you're looking about nine pounds. This Mosin right here, get some of that dirt off it. You're looking about 8.7 pounds. And as you can see, now even though this one's much shorter, make sure we see me. This one, though, actually, believe it or not, weighs more than this one, mainly due to the uh, the bayonet. This is about eight point. No, the uh, now this mose in here is about eight point seven five pounds. Unloaded. We're going to go ahead and put some rounds in this Mosin here. The 9130. And see how this one shoots. And the bolt looks pretty. We'll compare the bolt right quick. Oh, 
are the same. As you can see, you can So you can sort now swap bolts. They're both five right you now, chambered and five round magazine. Clear. Time to switch shooters. Definitely feel the shock wave with each shot. Clear? What you think? It's uh, it hurts less on the shoulders. <laughs> so with the Mosins, they're definitely powerful and, uh, rifles to shoot. You feel you know, you definitely feel that uh, you know the report. You now every time you 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 pull that trigger, uh, and the shock wave if you're you know standing next to somebody, you know firing one of them. Uh, but also uh, fun, very fun uh, rifles to shoot. Now, if you're looking to, if you're interested in purchasing, you no know, one, you know, a Mosin account, you can probably spend eight hundred dollars or more, you know, for you know for these rifles. <clears throat> hey, so definitely, uh, I mean, they're more of a collector's item than anything now uh however they can be you know if you wanted to use it for you know for you know for hunting they can be sporterized and you could probably find plenty of sporterized versions out there so the met the now the Naganzo ain't the only thing i have out here to show you so a couple episodes back we did a review of the Gerson High Power and the one thing that I remarked on is how I didn't like them the grips because it came with you know with these just cheap feeling plastic grips here 
So I put some walnut walnut grips on it. We're gonna put some rams to it with the walnut grips and see how she fires. Definitely feels much more comfortable in the hand. I will say that. So, the wood grips, or the walnut grips, definitely does make it uh, more comfortable to shoot than the, the factory plastic grips. And uh, also, quite frankly, it makes the gun look a lot more sexy with the walnut grips. So, ladies and gentlemen, Fellow firearms enthusiasts, I'd like to thank you for joining us out here, Crooked Horse Rifle and Pistol in Markham, Mississippi. And until the next time, thank you for shooting with us. <laughs>